Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we'll be discussing certain details about what do you mean by journal proper, how is it prepared and how is it different from all the other books that we have studied in the earlier videos. Let's go through it. So when you talk about journal proper, it records all those transactions which doesn't fit into any other book. That means all those miscellaneous transactions that are referred to in any kind of transaction and which do not fit into any other kind of subsidiary book that we have learned about. That means purchase, purchase return, sales, sales return, cash book. In any of these specifications which they do not fit into, all these transactions are recorded under journal proper. I have jotted down certain points for you. Let's go ahead and figure out all those points. So it records all those transactions which are a credit transaction first of all and that do not fit into any other book. This is the first definition of it or a probable point which you can classify as to this is the journal proper transaction. Let's figure out few more details about it. Now the form and the procedure of how to record transactions in a journal proper is very similar to how we record transactions in a journal. So the way we record in any kind of journal, that means when we journalize any transaction entry, that's how the specific journal proper transactions are supposed to be recorded. Now, the kind of transactions that are a part of it have been mentioned down here. Let's go through them. It includes opening entries. That means opening balances of all these transactions may be recorded into journal proper. So if you record any opening, that means debtor accounts opening or creditors account opening, bills payable account opening. So opening transactions refers to journal proper transactions. Similarly, closing transactions are also a part of journal proper. So just like opening, wherever we have closing transactions, that will be a part of journal proper transactions or it will be recorded on the journal proper book. Now there are certain transfer entries whereby you have transferred from certain account to a different account. These transactions will also form a part of journal proper book. Adjustment entries are also a part of journal proper. If you remember, there are certain adjustments that we have done in the final accounts. Similar to that, when we have adjustment entries being recorded as a part of journal transactions, that means that will form as a part of journal proper itself. And the last part is rectification entries. So any rectification that we have learned or probably done in errors or rectification of errors in such transactions. Now these transactions are a part of journal proper. So these are basic categories where we have like opening, closing, transfer, adjustment and rectifications being a part of journal proper entries or journal proper book. Let's go ahead and see the illustration and before that we'll see the performa of it. Now the performa of journal proper is very similar to how we journalize the transaction. That means date, particular LF, debit amount and credit amount. Hence, when we talk about the performa and the procedure, it is very similar to all the journal entries that we have passed when we have studied about journal entries and recording journal entries. Let's go ahead and see what do we have in the illustration part. Now the illustration states about certain entries that you have to pass and they have given certain details for you. Let's go through the first one. Now we have been given certain opening balances of cash, debtors, billing, bills payable, creditors, etc. We have to record these entries. I'll let you know how to record these entries but just note down these transactions first. Let's go on to the second one then. The second transaction states transfer of 20,000 from credit of X account to Y account. That means something that was transferred to X account will now be credited to Y account. So whatever has been credited to X will now be reversed and then it will be credited to Y account. So figure out what the entry will be. Until the meantime, we'll go ahead with the third transaction. Now rupees 400 which were referred to ideally repairs of furniture have been mistakenly debited to furniture account that means furniture account was debited instead of repairs to furniture that means we have to pass the rectification entry there we'll go ahead and figure out how to do that part let's go on to the next part of the illustration we have to provide 10 percent depreciation on building this will be a regular depreciation amount or depreciation transaction entry that you'll have to pass 
rent unpaid rupees 2400 that means there is certain rent outstanding here so we'll have to pass an outstanding entry that means outstanding expenses entry which we have already learned in how to pass when we have learned about financial accounting or statements of financial accounting trading account profit and loss account and balance sheet remember the adjustments that's what you are going to do now let's prepare the proforma and start posting these journal entries so we'll pass on with the first entry now that there has been no date given so we'll just mention down the numbers there the first transaction we'll go ahead with that so if you see first transaction there were certain opening balances we'll note down those opening balances first it was cash account now cash account has debit balance hence it will be recorded on the debit side next one was stock again stock has debit balance hence it will be recorded on the debit side The next one was debtors. Again, debtors have a debit balance. Hence, it will be again recorded on the debit side of the journal proper. The next one was building account. Now, building account also has a debit balance. That means it is an asset. Hence, all assets are supposed to be recorded on the debit side. The next one was creditors. Now creditors being the term itself credit, hence it will be recorded on the credit side. And the last one was bills payable. Bills payable again is a liability. Liability always has a credit balance, hence it will be recorded on the credit side. So now that for the first transaction has been recorded, we'll go ahead with the second transaction. Let's read out the second transaction first. There was a transfer from X account to Y account. That means something that was already credited into X account was now supposed to be credited to Y's account. Hence, Y's account has been credited and X which was ideally credited first and then we have to reverse it back. Hence, we'll be debiting X account. We'll mention the amount here. So this is how you record the second transaction whereby the question states that transfer from X of credit to credit of Y account amounting 20,000. Let's go on to the third transaction. Now the third transaction refers to 400 rupees expenses which were ideally supposed to be debited to repairs to furniture account but they were ideally debited to furniture account. Now that the furniture account has been debited to reverse back you have to credit furniture account and the correct amount or the correct account has to be debited that means repairs to furniture. So this is how you record the third transaction. Now let's go ahead and figure out the fourth and the fifth transaction. Now the fourth transaction refers to provide 10% depreciation on building. The building's value was worth 160,000. Hence you have to prepare 10% depreciation on it. Now depreciation being an expense, it will be debited. Now this depreciation is on the building that means you're reducing the value of the building. So if the asset value is increasing it will be debited. However if the asset value is decreasing then that asset will be credited. So building account will be credited here. So the total of 16,000 that is 10% on 1,60,000. The capital value of the building was 1,60,000. 10% of it will be 16,000. Hence that amount will be recorded as a part of depreciation. Now let's go on to the fifth transaction or the last transaction. Rent unpaid 2,400. So as you know, it has the effect of outstanding rent. That means any outstanding amount has to be added to that rent again or added to that expense again. So if you have to add, that means you are increasing the expenses. So that specific expenses will be debited and the outstanding rent amount will be credited. So the amount of entry will be rent account debit to outstanding rent 2400. 
So this is how you prepare the journal entries when it comes to journal proper. These are old kind of different entries whereby which are not recorded into other kind of book. That means purchase book, sales book, sales return, purchase return. They do not consist of these entries. Hence, these are recorded into journal proper. I hope this was very clear in understanding how journal proper is supposed to be recorded. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.